Marlowe with Key West Boats. We're here today talking about the 244 center console from Key West. As you can see, this is one of the more impressive features of this boat, the tremendous flare we have in the front end, combined with the extremely sharp entry of the bow where we meet the, uh, the water. This uh, extreme entry angle really cuts into the waves very effectively, softening the right even in the open ocean where we expect to use this boat. And the extreme flare up here on the top end deflects those waves out and down so that you can cut through them at speed without getting wet on the inside of the boat. This particular boat is in production right now. It's uh, the two halves have just now been put together and they're getting ready to put the, uh, the interior in. Uh, we have one outside that is uh, more more assembled. We'll walk out and take a look at that and go through the features and benefits of this model. But I really want everyone to see this, uh, this very pretty bow section on this boat. More curves on this baby than Mel McPherson. Yes, that is true. <laughs> Uh, the plumbing, the gas tank is in the boat. Uh, one of the more common questions I get is what kind of material is the gas tank made out of? And this is the, uh, the cross-link poly, that's the more technical name for, for this material, but it is absolutely impervious to the ethanol that's in gasoline. The gasoline itself, it's a non-reactive material that doesn't corrode. Uh, we never used a fiberglass tank, never have, and, and never will. Uh, you know, fiberglass tanks are known to deteriorate inside in the resin and whatever uh, will migrate through the hoses into the engine and cause uh, total damage to the engine and the hoses. So, so good stuff on our fuel system. We got the makings of a mini transom door here haven't we Tom? Uh, mini transom door? <laughs> um, actually a transom door is an available option. Uh, it's not really necessary at all because we've got plenty of depth inside there to keep everyone in the boat. Yep. Um, but the nice thing about a transom door is if you do take a, a shot of blue water over the bow, you've got a big opening in the back end to let that water back out. So I personally would rather not have a door. Mm. The 244 center console has been rolled out the building. Uh, there's some final preparation to be done before it ships, uh, but that's where we are. We're in pre shipping. This particular one is displayed in the midnight blue, very deep, dark blue, gorgeous boat, I think. Uh, available in several colors, but this is this one of them. The, uh, the dark colors come with the, the white. Uh, hard nylon rub rail with very durable stainless inserts. Uh, that is a, a very attractive finish on the boats. Complements the dark color on the hull very nicely. As we move to the back end of the boat, uh, a couple of features to point out. Um, one of them again, the telescoping three-step ladder that folds up flush into the back deck into a built-in boarding platform. I'd also like to point out the semi-recessed trim uh, actuators and the recessed trim tabs that are fitted into the bottom hull of the boat. Uh, the boat that gets the trim tab as a standard feature just seems to, to look better and it gets the trim tab out of the way if we have those recessed into the hull. The function is the same. Um, I guess we could point out the dual live wells that are molded into the boat. Uh, that gives the boat some symmetry, balance. If you fill both live wells with water, you don't have a lot of weight on one side or the other to make it list. It balances your boat out. Uh, it also gives you an opportunity to separate bait. If you have large bait, small bait, or different types of bait, you can separate them in your live wells 
and uh, make it a little bit easier to keep up with. That's a good idea. Yep, I think so. Shall we get in? in? Yeah, let's hop in. You show us how. <laughs> picture I have on our website showing the, the live well with the nice water in the background. Yes, I do indeed. That's a very nice picture actually. The clear acrylic lids, the, the idea behind that is they allow the sunlight to come through. Mm. If, um, if you have a, a lid that doesn't allow sunlight to come through, the, the fish are in the dark. It's not a problem for them until you open the lid and the light flashes in on them. It startles them. They dart. They run into the side walls of the live well and now your bait doesn't last as long because they're injuring themselves every time you open the lid. Mm -hmm. With this type it doesn't startle them and uh, the bait lasts a lot longer that way. Mm -hmm. That's something that actually works. The, um, the blue interior, there's a theory that, that calms the bait. Uh, we haven't got any feedback from the bait yet. <laughs> well, I'm sure they enjoy their little jacuzzi bath. Yes, they? yes, they enjoy their jacuzzi, I'm sure. <laughs> um, yeah, you might want to, you know, take a shot down here and show the, yeah. the extensive plumbing and rigging that goes on inside the bilge. And notice that you have great access to that through that large opening in the, uh, the back bulkhead of the boat. Um, anyone that's ever done any service on a boat has had the opportunity to change out a bilge pump or an aerator pump in a boat that is all but inaccessible. Um, and all of this is very easily accessible. You can get to it with both arms, both hands, any part of that that you need to get to. Especially important if you need to get one of those through hull fittings that has a shut off valve on it. If some of the plumbing starts to leak uh, when you're out in the water, you'd like to stop that leak. And easy to get to the shut off valves on this one as opposed to some that, I mean, literally, I've only been able to get my fingertips on some valves mm. to try to cut it off. Next feature would probably be this uh, folding seat. Following seat? Oh, but we don't have the fault that we haven't got the seat there. <laughs> that's just the back. <laughs> right. Yeah, the folding seat, that's what these, these uh, brackets are for. But at this stage, we can show how heavy the brackets are. Yeah, they're pretty heavy, uh, duty, If you they? have a couple of passengers sitting on a, a bench seat, those passengers could weigh as much as 500 pounds or so. And that's a lot of pressure on the hinge hinges, mm -hmm. uh, the, the hardware. Uh, this design we've got here, you've got a very secure hinge pin. A solid stainless steel bar and the, the edge of that seat literally hangs off of this secure bracket um, and that's something we never had break uh, even with the big passengers bouncing through rough seas they don't seem to be able to break that particular part of the boat hmm. that's good a lot of rod holders along here we've got five more rod holders yeah yeah you know when you're trolling offshore it's um, you never have too many rod holders get a fish on you need to clear the rod you need somewhere to put those rods you just cleared and so rod holders in the back along the sides even up in the front of the boat are a nice option to have yep the other uh, leaning post more rod holders across the back end of that leaning post and, and the uh, cooler the, will go in underneath the cooler is in place there so you can access it easily put it in place And this is the the bottom of the uh, seat, holding seat that goes in place on the back end of the boat. Mm -hmm. You can see the framework underneath that. Uh, Pretty solid, isn't show it? Show how substantial that is. Uh, like I say, that you you can get an excess of 500 pounds of passengers on that. This frame holds up very well. Mm. I'll leave it sitting in place on that land post. Land post hasn't been finished yet. We still got the padding to go on that, the backrest pad and. A seat pad goes on that. Yep. And this looks like it's going to be rigged up with a mercury, eh? Huh? Uh, this is rigged for mercury. A Verado 300 horsepower is going on this. Mm -hmm. uh, the mercury rigging, um, this might be a good time to point out that if a, a boat is rigged with a mercury engine, we get matching yep. mercury gauges, uh, mercury control box. 
uh, and in this case with Verado, even the steering is matched to the mm. Mercury engine. Uh, if you had a uh, Yamaha, the gauges and controls would all be Yamaha. The wiring harness is all Yamaha. Nothing's aftermarket. It's all matched engine uh, brand to the, uh, the control brand. And judging by what you've got next to the uh, trim tabs, we've got a windlass fit fitted. And yes, indeed, we do have a, a windlass fitted up front, which is an option, I guess. Uh, the windlass is an option. The, um, the the expansive front deck up there accommodates a windlass very well, and in a lot of parts of the world, the uh, the windlass is a, a very welcome option. It helps you tie off the boat at a dock. They use those, those poles that you tie your, your front end off to, and they use that to tighten up your front tie off. Now, is this one going local U.S. or is this going to France or where is this going, Tom? This one is destined for France. Destined for France. There you go. Another big 244 off to our French cousin. That's right. Uh, we've actually sent a lot of 244s to France. They, uh, they seem to really appreciate the, the flowing lines of the boat. Mm -hmm. Not to mention the ride. Uh, while we're here at the console, steering wheel out of the way here, let's talk about the console a little bit. Um, this feature right here, if you'll notice the seam, Mm -hmm. the perimeter. This is where your instruments, flush mount instruments, would be mounted. And for instance, you put a a Garmin 10-inch screen in here, which fits quite nicely. And um, a couple of years, you want to upgrade, and the upgrade instrument you want to put in doesn't fit the cutout. It's easy to unscrew, take that whole panel out, and get a new panel, and start over instead of trying to. Uh, adapt with filler blocks or whatever. Uh, you know, a console that doesn't have this as a replaceable part, that's what you're stuck with. Getting a, a new board, screwing it in place, and then cutting holes in that. I think that's a nice feature. The, um, the lip you see up here does give you a little something to hang on to, but T-Top gives you plenty of that. But what it does better than that, the stuff that you put on top of your console, um, that usually rolls off in the floor, that gives you a stop to keep it from simply rolling off in the floor when you forget and go to accelerate with it. So a lot of thought put into that console. And you know, sometimes you look at it and you don't think about those things, but there's a lot of, a lot of detail work in that console. The, um, the space underneath that console, again, let's not waste anything. Now this is in the process of being rigged, but you can see a door in the front that gives you access to the water tank and the water pump uh, that may be mounted up there. Uh, the, the pan area, as I call it, is big enough for the porta potty and uh, a person to stand in there beside it. There's a, a shelf on the back side of the console that's big enough to put dual batteries. So you get your batteries high and dry inside the console, easy to access that wiring. And there's a curtain that's folded up right now that covers all of this. Once it's all tied up nice and neat, then the curtain drops down and covers the batteries and all that wiring. So you don't have the, um, you know, the possibility of getting tangled up in that as you're putting your, your bags in there or a person's accessing the, the porta potty. And there's also up here on the top another door. That door folds down to give the, the technician that's rigging the boat or servicing the boat after the fact very easy access to the back side of all those switches, breakers, and the instruments that are mounted in that dash panel. Hmm. Nice feature, especially if you've ever worked on one. You understand that very well. Hmm. Um, another feature I'm very proud of in these boats, <laughs> I like to point out the rod storage. And it's built into the gunnel. All this here is fiberglass that's molded in to the boat. All that's one piece molded in. You've got the racks that are another part screwed in, but the, the molded in rod rack is open uh, eight foot. So you can put an eight foot rod in there without having to use the, the rod tubes. You do see a rod tube up here. Mm -hmm. uh, that allows you to put an extra long gaff or even a fly rod that's nine or ten feet long underneath the gunnel on this boat. You know, fly rods seem to be getting more and more popular and the, the long gaff always popular in some tournament situations where you need to gaff that fish far before he ever gets there. Mm. The, uh, the bolsters you see here, very thick comfortable bolsters at a very high 
high heights. So yeah. When you're leaning over to land that fish, you feel very secure inside the boat. And you may have noticed the trough out here mm -hmm. that makes a very efficient tow grip. If you're bending over, your toes just fall naturally down instead of having to curl up into the tow bar that a lot of boats have. Uh, that doubles as a water trough. The water that gets on the floor collects in that trough and it's funneled back to the overboard drains in the floor. Again, they recess so that you don't have to hold a puddle on the floor. It'll all, all drain overboard. Yep. Now we're about we work our way up front then. Yeah, work your way up front. And conveniently we have some bow cushions in this boat. <laughs> when we talk about bow cushions, uh, the, the bow cushions are optimal. Before we get to that, let's talk about the uh, the storage. It's all standard features. This front seat. It gives you somewhere to sit down, rig baits or whatever, even ride if the water is calm enough. But when you get out in the open water and you want more space to walk around, that seat falls down out of your way. So a quick seat when you need it, out of your way when you don't. Now we can access the fish box. And the fish box is held open by a pneumatic piston. That makes it easier for you to get that fish cornered and in that box. It being in the floor, you can just kind of slide that fish in and gravity will take over. You can't see the length of that box efficiently, but the front end comes way on up here. So you can get a fish uh, just five foot can... or so long down inside there. Um, I have had five king mackerel in there all over 30 pounds. Have a good day. <laughs> and we've got a little macerator here. Oh, uh, that's a macerator. Because it's a fish box, you'll want a macerator pump to pump out the, the scales or whatever other debris gets in your fish box. Um, also, while we're here, notice the trough. Uh, they have a rain channel, rain water that gets on the deck or water that splashes over in a rough sea. It gathers in this channel here, runs down into the drain. That drain has a hose that runs back through the, um, the center cavity of the boat and runs overboard out the back. Mm -hmm. so, before it gets in that channel, comes up out the boat. Cup holders, ever important cup holders. We got one there, one there, another couple up here, so that the people that are sitting around just socializing up in the front end of the boat have somewhere to put their cups. And then the um, bow cushions mentioned earlier. And then you've got the backrest there. Mm -hmm. so you sit down. Plenty of foot space. It's actually a fairly comfortable place to sit. Now that cup hand holder's hand. in an excellent spot. Look at that. Right where your right hand is. Yeah. Okay. Sit down, get relaxed, and hope the fish don't bother you. <laughs> now what's under the uh, under the cushions, Tom? Under the cushions we have a storage box, and this is an insulated area. And right. this, we don't waste the space in that little tight corner back here. It goes all the way back in that little corner. Right. Now another big feature of this boat is the expansive top deck or... Expansive top deck. I like that. Um, huge gunnel. <laughs> I, um, I like to throw a cast net to catch bait. <laughs> and because I'm not extremely tall, I need all the help I can get with those nets. So instead of throwing a net from down here where I can barely reach over, I've got all this deck space up here to work with. And it is non-skid surface, very secure footing for throwing that net. And uh, like I said, I need all the help I can get, but I, even I can throw a net off of this. Mm. That goes right on around. To walk literally all the way to the back end of the boat on that deck. Mm. Now what, uh, what do we got there? A Lumar? What's the uh, little? Uh, that's a Lumar, is the model number. It's a Profish 700. Profish 700, okay. The uh, anchor locker. Mm -hmm. You do need to access the anchor locker. It's at a very comfortable height. You're very secure inside the boat, even at pitch and sea. Mm -hmm. A 
that's a fairly hefty uh, bow roller he's put on the front too, isn't it? Yeah, and when you put the, um, the anchor windlass, a uh, heavy bow roller is necessary because the windlass puts a lot of pressure on that anchor rope. A lot of downward pressure if the anchor is a little bit hung up, so you need a secure roller for that. And once the anchor is pulled in, it will store inside that anchor roller. Alright, and he's fitted up with the optional T-top. Yep, now the T-top is an option, but it's a very common option on this boat. Another option on this particular T-top is the windscreen. Hmm, yep. Uh, and what you see laying in the floor in the plastic bag is um, the, uh, the wings, as we call them. All right. They zip in place here. There's another clear that comes out to the sidewall, comes down up underneath. So that, that spray that comes at you from a quartering wind will be deflected quite effectively off of you, keeps you very dry. That's also real nice in a rainstorm. <laughs> Now this um, one is a one-piece wraparound unit, isn't it? It is. And I think that's uh, also common to the uh, 211? It is. Yeah. The, uh, the T-top and the console that are on these two boats uh, are almost universal between the two boats. The only difference is this console will accommodate dual binnacle and the, uh, the 211 is single only. Mm. Yeah, that's a nice zip out here. Yep. If it's a nice warm day like it is today, you'll want to open that up, roll it up. Yep. And get some ventilation. Yep. And it's the deluxe T top. You've got the electronics box, the spirit lights, and the uh, rocket launchers, of right. course. Right. This yeah. is uh, what we call a deluxe T top. It comes standard with all those features the spreader lights, the electronics box, the base for the outriggers if you're inclined to use outriggers, and the rocket launchers across the back. All five of those rocket launchers are standard on the deluxe T top. The dome light here, the interior lighting, that's standard as well. Um, the electronics box is probably worth mentioning. This box is a cast uh, fiberglass. It's not aluminum. Aluminum can corrode. It's a fiberglass box. One of the driest spots on the boat. Hmm. There's a nice seal around the uh, door. Excellent. It's quite a boat. I think so.